to this meeting of the Dallas County Commission for consider items on our official agenda. A little recess for an informal work session. Then we'll hear from our registered public speakers. This court will then convene for a closed session um, as allowed by law to consider items as allowed by law. Before we tend to today's business on the agenda, I want to take uh, a moment to address our report policy and make sure everyone is, is aware of what the rules are and what we expected um, of them. First of all, none of us want to read what happened last Tuesday, not the, not the commissioners, nor the public at large. Uh, Dallas County citizens deserve uh, better, and we uh, uh, will all have an opportunity today for a civil dialogue. I'll protect the rights of the registered public speakers to express their opinions as freedom of speech is important in our democracy. Uh, we all must express ourselves in a civil way in keeping with the long-standing rules of law that you and I have inherited and are bound by and that I've taken an oath to enforce. I want to now read for you that portion of the rules that those of you sitting in the audience and not speaking are also bound by so that you will, will, will be fully aware of those. They read as follows. Citizens and other visitors attending commissioner's court meetings shall preserve order and decorum and shall neither by conversation or otherwise delay or interrupt the commissioner's court any person making personal and pertinent profane or slanderous remarks or who becomes boisterous while addressing and or attending the commissioner's court meeting shall be removed from the commissioner's courtroom if security is so directed by the presiding officer. Unauthorized remarks from the audience, stamping of feet, whistles, yells, and similar demonstrations shall not be permitted. And by this I mean, if you disagree with the rulings of the chair, or agree or disagree with the speakers that you will hear from today, if you audibly um, yell your approval or disapproval, um, I will strictly construe and strictly enforce these rules. I want to forewarn you um, of that. Now, it's been brought to my attention that there are those who are working and organizing to intentionally come to this court and cause disruption. For example, um, I've been provided with a flyer um, uh, regarding a boot camp that's being uh, held by a local political organization uh, that will take place this weekend. The boot camp flyer promises participants will learn how to, and I'm quoting, generate and foster a healthy level of confusion, disorientation, and general discombobulation within the political establishment at all times. Now, this may be acceptable in a political rally, but it is not acceptable in this court. Let me be clear, we will have order in this court. Attempts to generate and foster confusion, disorientation, or disruption will not be tolerated. Commissioners will be orderly as well as the public. And at this end, we will brief and pass a decorum policy today covering the five members of the court. Essentially, it will hold us to the same standards applicable to all of you that are in attendance. I want to say that I am very proud of the bipartisan way that our five uh, members of this court have worked through this and many other difficult issues in my brief time on the court, and I thank each of you personally uh, for your support in a, in a difficult personal time um, for me. Finally, I want to remind all of you that videos of racial tension and other foolishness created in Commissioner's Court today will only serve as an impediment to our Chambers of Commerce, our business communities, and this court in our efforts to attract and keep cor corporations relocating and expanding here in Dallas County. And it's naive to think that our competitors won't use video clips in order to best us in, in this battle for, for all important jobs for our Dallas County taxpayers. With that in mind, um, let us continue uh, with the business of the court. Uh, we have a resolution today, and I recognize Commissioner Dickey. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. Now, I wonder if uh, Lieutenant Jerry Kitchens, anybody here with the premier task force, Anyone from the club could come forward. Thank you, Lieutenant Fishes. Uh, if I may read this uh, resolution, uh, we've been asked by legislators in Austin to pass this resolution for our court so that we can continue this to get plenary funding in Dallas County from the state. 
whereas the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has designated the nine county area, Collin, Dallas, Denton, Ellis, Johnson, Coughlin, Parker, Rockwall, and Carrick counties as non-attainment under the 97 8-hour ozone national ambient air quality standards effective June 04, and whereas EPA reclassified the North Texas nine county non-attainment area from moderate to serious classification requiring a state implementation plan revision until <coughs> 2013, and whereas EPA is anticipated to announce a new ozone standard by 2011, which is going to be much more stringent than the 97 one. Uh, during the 80th legislative session, Senate Bill 12 expanded the low income vehicle repair retrofit and the accelerated retirement program and increased statewide funding for implementation of local initiative projects, including emissions enforcement programs. And whereas LIRAC and WEB are self-funded programs through fees included in vehicle emission inspections only in the non-attainment areas, including Dallas County, and whereas Dallas County created the Dallas County Sheriff Emissions Enforcement Program by utilizing these funds and is successfully removing high-emitting vehicles from our roadway, our roadways, let it be resolved that Dallas County recommends that the 82nd Texas Legislature appropriate all available funding for LIRAC and LIP, including the Dallas County Sheriff Emissions Enforcement Program. This resolution shall be in effect immediately upon its adoption. This resolution will be transmitted to the Texas Legislative Budget Board, the Texas House Committee on Appropriations, the Texas Senate Committee on Finance, and all North Texas State delegates. And I saw that. Um, the, uh, I will second numerous amendments. This, this, this resolution, if it's going to go to a delegation, this court basically has, through our legislative meeting, always attached the fiscal impact that bills have. And while this resolution speaks to the 80th legislative session. It does not speak to the 82nd. There is HR 1 that is filed. There is SB 1 that is filed. This particular bill has, in terms, of, especially if we're generating it to the legislative budget board, has a $200 million economic impact to the North Texas region. And when you talk about that kind of impact, not, not counting the money, the money of the $30 billion that comes into this area, about 15 million of those dollars come to Dallas County. We get the lion's share of the dollar. So in this, in this resolution, there's no mention of HB1 and SB1. Number two, in the merger that's going on in Austin, this bill does not even enjoy the, the support of its now sponsoring agent. Uh, with that agency, the Clean Air Account, that whole uh, 157, I, I would ask also in the amendment that this court consider as part of, and some of us are going to be talking about testimony, moving this to the Department of Motor Vehicle under Chairman uh, Victor Vandegrift. Uh, Chairman Vandegrift has, has uh, agreed to and is working with uh, the region uh, to talk about bringing this you know, under their purview. So while I support the resolution you know, in, in terms of its intention, it, it, it's just uh, has deficiencies in extolling the impact on the economy it fails to speak uh, to the impact on statewide funds. And I think if we're going to send a resolution, we ought to at least send one uh, that has a, a fiscal impact so that our delegation, uh, they read the resolution, uh, will say that you know, Dallas County is concerned about what's going on here. And if the maker will, uh, and the court will agree to that kind of uh, amendment language, 
Um, then, uh, like I said, I said. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I believe uh, uh, Commissioner Cantrell already seconded to this. <coughs> uh, however, uh, that's the, the, we're really talking about apples and oranges here. Uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Price. Uh, this probably will and hopefully will be moved over to the Department of Motor Vehicles because they're more intensely involved in, in clean air and this, and I certainly agree with that. That's going to be done anyway, probably. Uh, this particular, uh, in relation to the fiscal note, uh, this is a self-funding program. This is not uh, asking any money from the state of Texas. Uh, these, these funds are already dedicated to this and are, are being generated by the uh, clean air inspections that we have. What we have in Texas are a lot of people who, uh, in, in the Dallas area, about 300,000 fake inspection stickers. And people will go to uh, sometimes a legitimate place and buy it from a crooked employee, or sometimes from an illegitimate place that sells fake inspection stickers or does fake stickers uh, on, on, on cars that, other, that would pass, but it's, a, it's not their car. This is a very big problem. It causes pollution on the road. Uh, these particular establishments bring in um, dealing with drugs and, and other cases. And we have a very good record of cleaning up our roads in Dallas County with the cleaning task force. We were asked by uh, different legislators for all of our counties, and that includes the nine counties, to pass this resolution for each of our commissioners' court uh, to continue this. And Lieutenant Kitchens is the head of our clean air task force. Could you just tell us about, in the last two years, how successful we have been? Excuse me, Judge. Um, the court is still and the court is still discussing. All right, but we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you an offer, opportunity to, have, to ask a question, uh, questions if you feel like to make a comment first, because I do have a question for oh, Shad sure. myself. I, usually, when we give a resolution, something like this person will speak. Mr. Grasses, you want to make another comment? Because I've, I've got a, a question of staff. Well, you know, again, it, it's, it's unfortunate, Judge, it's not happening in order. $28 million each biennium statewide in revenue. That being said, again, while we talk about it being self-funding, the design of the program is to take and to sweep the funds. And I want the legislators to know what the impact is on this region. Yes, we're not a tangent area. We understand that. We understand any opportunity to take these funds and remove them will impact us more severely than others. In fact, last year we replaced over 22,000 passenger uh, uh, vehicles in Dallas County as a result of the, the LIRAP program. And so all I'm saying is that the resolution, and I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Cantrell, I did not realize for a second, that's fine. I'm speaking to both the seconder and the maker in terms of amending the resolution so that it has, uh, was our concern with relevance. And with that in mind, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, question Kitchens, but I, I've got a question, Daryl, Brian, whoever uh, can answer this. What, what is uh, uh, the, how onerous would it be for us to attach a fiscal note to this if the <coughs> maker and second one to accept that as a friendly amendment? The problem is that that thing is too big. Uh, uh, given that, with, with second degrees, you know, one of the things that we have is not just necessarily the sweeping of the money. What they've historically done over the last three or four sessions is we, we charge the money, they put it in the account, and they balance the budget money. Mm -hmm. They don't appropriate it. So, you know, the more we have in there that shows the economic impact to this region, uh, I think clearly is, is we do nothing but benefit the resolution. So second degree is on the mayor. And I agree because one of our big problems uh, down in the legislature has been that we're in kind of this dedicated self-funding program will be used for something else. So uh, I will do that. Yet another example of all bipartisan working through things, and I appreciate everyone uh, doing that. So it may, not hurt, it may not hurt to have a Republican record of the So I'll withdraw my second, allow Mr. Price to be the second, and look at 
that going forward. With the front end, I hear second. I hear Elba, uh, Commissioner uh, Garcia is, a, is the second. Uh, did you want to ask that question of, of uh, Lieutenant Kitchens, or are we ready to vote? Uh, well, Lieutenant Kitchens, would you make a comment about Yes, Commissioner. Uh, briefly, the program is funded by these uh, dedicated funds, which are collected from a fee, not a tax, uh, from uh, inspections here in Dallas County. Over the last three years, has been successful uh, in uh, improving our air quality to the point that in last year, we only missed attainment by one part per billion, and we were uh, successful in removing 18 tons per day of uh, NOx out of the, the air drastically improving the air quality. Also, uh, the emissions program here in Dallas County has seen a 55% reduction in the amount of fraud within the program, which contributes um, to the uh, improvement of the air quality here in the, in the region. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, while we know that we still have a long way to go, I go uh, a long way to go, I mean, this is a step in the right direction. And I want to commend all my colleagues that have been working with this, and of course not that the sheriff department uh, has this for you. I mean, we really want to continue to work with Commissioner Vicky and the sheriff department and my colleagues. So um, I would definitely accept on the resolution with the amendment of putting the financial impact by the right thing. It makes sense and it's the right thing to do. They need to realize how much, you know, uh, Dallas County will be impacted after all the events that have happen. So thank you to both of all right. Uh, well, let's, let's, we've got we got a motion uh, by Vicky uh, from the amendment by Garcia. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion unanimously carries. Uh, we will now consider item eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Item nine, the five piece. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, we will now consider orders 10 through 40 with substitutes for 15, 19, 29, and corrected court orders for 40, and then A1, A2, and A3. And I'll um, move that agenda with the substitutes for 15, 19, or the A1, A2, and A3. Uh, I just want to discuss um, 20, I was requesting a motion, and uh, would like to discuss uh, 25 and 26. Okay. And I would like to discuss uh, 19 and substitute 19. Sure. So, we start in numerical order, that's all right. That's fine. 19. Uh, Mr. Garcia, did I no. Uh, substitute uh, uh, 19 <coughs> approved the creation of an IT executive governance committee. And that stated that uh, until we get a CIO that's the head of our IT, we don't have that in Dallas County right now. And it's a pivotal position that, uh, one, uh, that a commissioner will be the head of that governance committee and will run it. Uh, then, to this morning, I see that there's a substitute for that. Uh, who will put forth this substitute? 19. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Price? Yeah. Well, this substitute says that a commissioner uh, will be the chairman of the IT Executive Governance Committee and will preside over all meetings. So that would be to the exclusion of the professional who we will be hiring uh, we hope we can attract uh, to go, to run our IT, which is very pivotal in a county of this size. And as uh, you all may have read, we have had a, a, a great deal of, uh, we've had a, several very uh, diff bad reports from consultants. I would just suggest that this court re revisit this and think about when we do hire a professional, that that professional should chair this committee. I believe it will have a chilling effect in job search if an uh, individual or individual commissioner who's not a professional in the internet area is in charge of the, the committee because more than governance, it's really in charge of the department in Dallas County. And board and staff, uh, we, we are the board. 
we, we do governance as a committee or a commission, of <laughs> but we have professionals who run the department and there should be a differentiation in those places. So I will be voting against substitute 19 and I hope others will consider letting going back to 19 as it was stated, in which when we do get a CIO, that person will run uh, the governance committee and their department. We, of course, do the ultimate governance as the commissioners do. Yep. Any, anyone else on that? I've, I've got a comment. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We discussed this a few weeks ago, and I understood that um, since we don't have that position here right now, Commissioner Contreras, you know, Commissioner Chris Sputney, if, if I'm wrong, you will be ready to take that position. That's correct. Um, so in the meantime, it's still the rest of the of the of the court order stays the same. I mean, if Commissioner Vicky, myself, or Jason King, Commissioner Price wants to attend, by invitation we can go to I mean, we can't oh, so right? the invitation is held in the courtroom. 8 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. Uh, it's, it's posted. Uh, the record's kept for the entire meeting. And one of the things that this committee does, and, and that you'll, you'll see, nothing takes place in this committee that, that does not come in front of this court that is briefed and in court order. We also produce an agenda for that uh, particular governance committee. But this committee basically looks at our IT projects on an enterprise-wide basis, not a separate department basis. So it takes a different approach and when we talk about prioritizing and ranking projects and, and basically settling disputes between departments as we look at it, enterprise and sets kind of the direction that we go with the approval of the commissioner's group. So nothing's done through that community that's not brought back here and approved by the entire board. And once the CIO position is filled, you know, you will let us know in case that you do not want to chair that committee anymore or, you know, you want to change this. Judge, yeah, yes. um, every committee we have in Ellis County, <coughs> chair by our commissioners, CJAB, public health, sanitation, jail population, we got, we got 15 committees. Every one, every one is chaired by a commission. Why would this particular committee be anything different? And Commissioner Cantrell has been honored by the state, by the Texas Association of Counties, by the Conference of Urban Counties as being premier, knowing more about IT than almost any other, definitely any other individual in this county. But in this state, he's had that kind of recognition. And so, well, we're very fortunate to have. We've had those committee meetings for years on end. We posted those meetings, and the rest of the county elected officials and part of the governance committee has worked well with him and with those meetings published, there have been probably less than 10 times that anyone else has attended those meetings other than me, and I've just been there as a support. So that uh, Commissioner Cantrell will be appropriate uh, to lead this governance committee. And I think you'll find that from those other elected officials. May I? Thank you. Uh, I, I respectfully disagree uh, with Commissioner Price, uh, although Mr. Cantrell is very knowledgeable about IT and very interested in that. My point is this, uh, when you have commissioners, individual com commissioners that uh, control a committee and control a department, uh, it has a chilling effect on the life <coughs> of that department. If we look at past history, I think you will find the scenario different. We have a history in Dallas County uh, for, for many reasons. That has, uh, we've had a very unsuccessful IT experience here. 
We've had three reports uh, since I've been on the court, all of which have been very uh, negative about our IT system. There's an old saying that if you continue to do things the same way, nothing's going to change. When we do hire a CIO, that person needs to be in charge. They don't do a good job, you let them go, but by the way, they need to run their own ship. That's been a problem in the past. Well, um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll weigh, weigh in on this uh, to this extent. I, I have shared Commissioner Dickey's concerns and the concerns of all, all of our uh, commissioners with the past failures of IT. I'm pleased with the work that Tatum has done. This is the sort of, of, of performance-based, uh, uh, top-down, thorough review of the department that we need uh, throughout the county um, with with our departments, but we did, we can't afford to hire consultants at seventy-five thousand dollars a month to do it. So we have to do that process. <coughs> um, I think we are going to see ninety-nine uh, percent, if not one hundred percent, of Tatum's uh, uh, suggestions implemented. Um, I want to, to uh, you know, I do want to mirror things that a couple of the other, my other colleagues said. One, we don't have any uh, any. Uh, committees that aren't chaired by the elected representative commissioners and, and I don't want to make an exception but I do want a strong CEO that runs that department. I also want to mirror that um, in my brief time here uh, what I've seen from Commissioner Cantrell is an incredible passion um, for um, for IT and for helping uh, right the ship and, and I feel like he is, he is the right person um, uh, for the job. My interest in that, I've made public that I will attend those committees as somewhat of an ex officio member, is by no reflection um, any concern I have for any commissioner or any member of that committee. It's that I see IT as a, even though I'm not very tech savvy, I see IT as a possibility for savings because we have to learn to do more with less and we're going to face a tough uh, budget crunch. But hearing your, your concerns, Commissioner Dickey, and, and uh, Sharing a desire to see I, I, IT uh, uh, right, um, I want to stick with our long-standing practice of keeping uh, elected commissioners as, as chair committees. Everybody having said their, their piece on that, so yeah. I would like to add just something for the record, because I do listen to Commissioner Vicky's concern. However, uh, IT is a department that is, it needs to me to be moved forward. Um, we, you know, it, there's not one week that I don't hear complaints about our website, about problems with the way we operate, uh, without efficiencies, and people wanted to connect in a very uh, direct way. And at this point, after the briefing, and without having a CEO um, officer yet, I definitely, Commissioner Vicky, going to support this and Commissioner Control to chair that. I think if anything else, it's time to move on. It has been uh, a problem with the county, as I understand, for years. And uh, I feel comfortable that we will have the opportunity to go to those meetings if there's something that we really need to move forward. And uh, with that, Josh, uh, you know, I hope that we all can work together and be ready to move this forward. <coughs> Call that that one one for for uh, the voter shall we move to 25 and discuss that. I'm uh, approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, no. No. All right. Record will reflect uh, uh, 40 days and one day. And then from, 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 from I believe the next thing to be discussed is 25. Yes, that's right. Uh, George, colleagues, I just pull this item because uh, I. You know, as, as I was looking into the, uh, you know, the, the briefing that we got about the replacement of the Henry Regional uh, Center building uh, that we discussed last week, I was a little concerned about the fact that the court here that it was $200,000 uh, versus $400,000 to replace the whole system. And I was incorrect, right, Mr. Martin? Correct. Actually, four hundred thousand was a bid also only for the front end of the system. Well, and uh, I, I yes, please. If you can. can you explain to us, to the you know audience and the court, what happened last week and what were the changes? 
of what's the guarantee, which was my question to you uh, last week, the guarantee of what? First, let me apologize if you can hear you. Your question was how much would it cost to have to replace all of the entire system? <clears throat> and the information that came back was construed incorrect. The piece of the system that wasn't included in the pneumatic piece is another $200,000. Consequently, the 200000 that was in the one bid plus the 200000 on the new match was construed incorrectly by me to be the entire system. It is not. There's an additional 200000 on top of any, above and beyond anything we've seen in these quotes. The piece that we're recommending being replaced is the front end of the piece that we're having to trouble with. You hear me now? The guarantee on this front end piece will be one year. <coughs> one year? Yes, For the $200,000? Yes. Did we ever find out how much it will be to replace the whole system? The budgetary quote I got to show is $200,000 on top of anything that we see here. For a total of $600,000. $600,000. I gotcha. We will look at that under the Internet Services contract. It is a potential <coughs> candidate for that project, and if so, it will be replaced using savings generated by the project. Our intent right now is to get out of the manual mode of operation <coughs> that we're currently using at this facility. Okay, and um, last question. You mentioned in your email that you're going to have, and I believe that's what you just talked about a, a moment ago, an efficiency for all the different buildings that we have in the county. That's correct. When is that going to start? When will we see the report? We have the interview scheduled next week. From those interviews, we'll come the best of time off. We'll make a selection and we'll establish a schedule from there. Okay. Uh, now, I understand, Dr. Smith, you're okay with this? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, if, if everything is, you know, satisfactory, I'll move for approval. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I actually had a question. <coughs> Can you tell me what the We had questions last week. We wanted the questions answered, and then this week I see it on a court order, and nobody had answered the questions that we had this week. So um, uh, I think that when, when we do have questions, that before we put it on a court order, we be sure that, um, that we understand that those questions so we can make an informed vote on them. Uh, there were like, numerous emails that I saw. You may not have, have not seen these. But I think Friday, perhaps it was Friday, and then maybe some again yesterday. There were numerous emails that were back and forth, and I think they worked it out. Didn't you uh, attempted to answer all the questions in email and advise in email that I placed the court order off to uh, expedite the matter. Judge, and in addition, you know, in fact, I think I was the only one responding back and forth with emails. Yes. Number one, number two, did I direct you to doctor? Smith and you met with them. Yes, sir. And we walked the system. So some of us seem in the inch back or the X back. With that being said, I don't always respond to all the emails, but I did uh, talk to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You moved it. I, I, I thought we moved it in the video to begin with, and you put it out. We did, I thought we'd already moved it just to put on. Uh, well, I, there were emails, but I think when there's that much question in court, that there needs to be a little dialogue. It's, it's like I've talked to some of uh, some the staff sometimes, and they said, oh, I've sent an email. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a, a passive form of communication. Sometimes it's good to get a heads up and, and uh, passive communication. But there's so many issues that we have. I was just a little troubled that two of us had really asked some strong questions, and I knew you had some concerns and Dr. Smith and so uh, we just see it on the court order uh, without having any conversation about it. it just troubled me a little bit. Our questions will answer. Well, so, should we take that one up? Uh, 25 or a motion? <coughs> yeah, because it already is already a motion. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead, uh, take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, 26, I think, was the next one. Yes, and this is just a question for Scott. And I, I mean, my question has been but for the record, I just wanted to know uh, how much of the county has 
get paid for the damage that happened last year um, up when the water pipe broke and the mango. Uh, our total expenses were just shy of $8 million, and to date with this payment, we will have been paid a total of $5,372,000 in reimbursement from our property insurance coverage. We have a million dollar deductible, so taking that into account, we've been compensated about 76% of our expenses. Um, we do have a meeting set up with the adjuster um, it, the insurance company and the uh, auditors for the insurance um, at the end of next week to review some final expenses to see if we can get a little bit more reimbursement out of that. Okay, well, I, um, you know, my only comment to this court uh, is that we really need to move forward with the disaster recovery plan. It has to be a priority because we cannot afford to have another of these uh, incidents that uh, cost to our taxpayers um, so much money. So, let me say. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. We just responded to that's what I was getting ready to ask you to respond to. It. I, I don't think they heard you, uh, Mr. Martin, if you will, again, with the individual briefing already. But hey, Tatum and Rodney Christian have individually briefed you all, I believe, on the disaster recovery plan. If not, they will be coming around for final briefings and all that. And we will have a briefing before commissioners court within the next two weeks on the disaster recovery plan and recommendation from the court of moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Because that was going to pay for it, depending on what select. Right, right. Of course, there's a cost to it. We're going to have to consider that with the $33 million deficit we're currently facing. So. And that was, that was going to be my question is since this happened last October, what are our immediate plans to see that this doesn't happen again? That, that will be discussed as part of the disaster recovery plan. And you're right, it happened last May, and you know, the weather okay. warming up and uh, the potential of additional water for us. So okay. I'm sorry about that. I don't think we can afford for this to happen again. Yeah. What's our premium payments on that to the insurance policy? Do you know how can we? Historically, when you've got to meet up, yeah, that type of premium certainly has paid off. Mm -hmm. okay, I guess we voted on that 26. Uh, 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 All the better. Uh, uh, Before you move forward, did you want to discuss A1? Which is yeah, the very, very briefly, A1, uh, our new decorum policy uh, for commissioners. Essentially, uh, this, this uh, mirrors the policy for the public uh, in attendance and holds us accountable to the same rules that we expect of the public. Uh, there have been some, some uh, modifications since it was in your briefing, but let me take you through those modifications as, we, as required by law. Uh, first modification, all references to the county judge in the code were changed to presiding officer to maintain consistency uh, with the rules uh, dealing with the public at meetings. Number two, under uh, section four, the phrase including but not limited to staff was added to the last members and other speakers shall not worry or admonish another person, including but not limited to staff. Number three, also added to the end of section four is the sentence other members will not interrupt to answer questions directly to staff. Uh, uh, number four, under section eight, portions of letter A and B were combined. Um, so the meaning has not changed, but they were combined into one paragraph. Number five, the word clapping was eliminated from uh, letter A to be uh, to make that paragraph in keeping with the public um, the rules regarding the public. Number six, uh, letter B now refers only to an incident when the presiding officer fails to act. Number seven, letter C was added to refer to an incident when the presiding officer is in violation of the rules. And number eight, the previous letter E was removed because it is repetitive of language found in uh, letter A. So with those changes, all of which you should have in your, in your A1, um, Addendum. Uh, I, I move for. Uh, I don't 
Well, that's probably not that's right. Well, you know, yeah, that's true. Uh, Commissioner Price has moved and what was the second? Mm -hmm. So that, that just simply explains uh, the changes as, as required by law. And, and having done that, I believe we're ready to vote on, on that and all the rest of the consent agenda, correct? Or is there anything else? We've already, already, already voted that on time. We haven't voted on the we voted on. The main items on the agenda. We voted on the consent agenda, but not the main items on the agenda. Um, I would like it to be the second with the matter of on the A1 on the code. Uh, you already moved and someone else already said that. I was asking if the matter was the second. Pick a second. All right. Well, um, all, all those in, in uh, favor of what we've got left with the consent agenda? With the agenda. With the agenda. All right. Are you saying we've already taken the vote? I'll get on the consent, but not on the agenda. All right. So, so all those in favor of these agenda items? Right. Okay, so show that as, as unanimous on the remaining um, items on the agenda. Okay, so next we've got our briefing agenda. Uh, the Commissioner's Court uh, says for its briefing agenda uh, for items to be considered in a subsequent session. Mr. Martin. Well, Judge Commissioners, item one addendum. That, that court order was only formal agenda we just discussed. Item one, health and human services, one oh. A. Recommend the approval of the letter of agreement with Reliant Energy for the 2011 Reliant Retail Services Program for Energy Assistance. Item 1B, that quote order was on your formal agenda is item number 33. Item 2, Fire Marshal, that quote order was on your formal agenda is item number 29. Item 3, Human Resources Civil Service, 3A. Recommend the approval of the MOU for the utilization of the employment eligibility verification system. Commissioner Garcia, did you have any questions on that one? Uh, pretty much I just wanted to be sure because we have had problems in the past with background checks in the history of Dallas County to be sure that uh, we're familiar with the way this company operates, that, you know, staff feels comfortable about this contract and that's pretty much it. I want to be sure that they understand that, you know, we expect them to do a, you know, true background in every single employee. <laughs> Item 3B, recommends approval of the reappointment of Harlan Harris and James Mitchell and the appointment of Juanita Nannis to serve as commissioners for the Sheriff's Civil Service Commission. Item 4, auditor, that information provided as information for Commissioner's Court. Item 5, Commissioner's Court Administration, recommends approval of the process described in the agreement for conducting performance evaluations of county department heads and your county administrator. Item 6, budget, 6A, your conference travel and training requests. 6B, you have hiring freeze exceptions to the DA's office, the clerk, and the Department of Criminal Justice. And 6C, recommends the addition of a public defender attorney four for the 265th Criminal District Court. Um, the performance of the reviews, I thought, in terms of staff, I didn't understand the 360. And, uh, we, I uh, see that that's proprietary and you have an opportunity to make any amendments with regards to the, the 360. Um, yes, you can, sir. Yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. 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 That will be solely for my evaluation. Yes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm actually looking for some lower numbers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And, and before we get off of, of the of performance reviews, as you know, we are uh, uh, working towards uh, a plan for performance-based uh, uh, budgeting, and this is the, the first step in that plan, is to, is to have solid performance reviews of all of the department heads. And so I'll lodge you on your work, and I'll lodge you in advance, uh, Mr. Brown, for your work on performance-based budgeting, which I expect to put on the agenda for next week. All right. Uh, at this time, I'll, I'll call forward our, our uh, public speakers. Um, uh, Mr. William Brubeck. Uh, uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name, sir. Mr. William uh, Brubeck. Is William Bubeck or Bubeck? 
where I've been for about 30 years and over half of that time I have served the county as an election judge and I just wanted to tell you all how very disappointed I am that Bruce Sherbet was terminated in his job as elections administrator. Not one time did he fail to help us whenever we had a problem. When it came to uh, the statement of residence and the suspense thing in our poll books. He took suggestions and implemented them to make the judges' jobs easier. He was always there when we had a question or anything. We had a lot of DOJ uh, observers in our polling places. They have always asked, who did the training? What do you have? Well, I gave them all these printed materials that we got all the time. And they have always been very impressed with Mr. Sherman's work. And I have nothing to all against Tony, but I do think that Bruce deserved better and deserved more. And I just want you to recognize he too has had uh, athletes accolades from state, federal, and, and everyone. And bless his heart, you know, we'll have a tough time to find people who will be as independent as he was, never partisan in any way. And I'm really, really disappointed in the way he was treated. Thank you. Miss, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny Jeffrey, please. Mr. Benny uh, Jeffrey. All right. Uh, Mr. One last call, Mr. Benny Jeffrey. All right. And and um, next, Mr. Lawson Turner. Mr. Lawson Turner. I'm Lawson Turner in Dallas, Texas, where I am an election judge and a precinct chair. And I'm here on the behalf of our Mr. Price that we feel like that injustice has been done, that he is represented his constituents. And I think everyone, I'm happy to see the resolution that was passed this morning. Because I don't care who it is, whether it's Commissioner Price, Commissioner Dickey, Judge, whomever it may be, you can take so much. You can press anyone against the backboard. Eventually, he's going to come out. And that's all that has been happening. 
and for the people's last week to come down and to disrespect Commissioner Price is an insult to the city of Dallas, Texas. And I think that those people should all be bought away. They cannot speak for the city of Dallas. When they say that we're speaking yeah. for Dallas. Mr. Mr. Turner, I appreciate your comments, but I, I want you to shut and, and while I'm talking, give him a little more time. But I want you to shy away from any personal comments on those people because our rules dictate that we cannot make personal comments about people. And there were, you know, whatever there were, six or eight speakers uh, last week. So we can't personally talk about those people. But in keeping with that, finish your comments, please. Thank you, sir. I say that if we have a new election person, that that person give them that opportunity. And I feel like that if they are not able to do the job, then this is your job, the commissioner's job, to call that person into question and to relieve that person of their duty. It's no different from any other company or any cooperation. I served as the Vice President of United Auto Workers. Anytime that we felt like that the chaplain or the civil rights person, we was elected, they was appointed. If we felt like they wasn't doing their job, it was our job to either dismiss them and to replace them. Because guess what? It went on. The job went on. The next person came in, they did just as magnificent job as the person that left. People just have to get away from and hung up upon this person is doing this job, this person can't do that job. Give that individual an opportunity. Once they get the opportunity and they, they do not deliver, then it's time to move on, relieve them of their duty. So with that, I'm asking the judge, please, Mr. Rice has been elected 26 years here, and I think his constituents, they back him. Please finish, finish your, your, your thought because okay. the, the time is run. And I hope that this court would not let anyone come in and disrespect anyone of these commissions. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Judge, if I could have one of your just a question. Really. When we go through the list and there's, I don't know if we're at capacity in the fire marshals, keeping people out and set. I'm not sure. Fire marshal, did you answer your question for us, please? Are we at capacity? Yes, sir. We are. We are at capacity. Then I would ask for the people that did sign up if, as we go through and call the names or not here, here the people that are in. And then maybe call the hall for the ones that. Oh, that's a great idea. They're so blocked out. Um, where they can. That's a good idea. Is it, do I see someone going to call? Yes, sir. We are calling them out. You are calling them out. Oh, okay. That's that, being done. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, all right. Uh, yes, Mr. Jeffrey. We have called you. <laughs> Go ahead and state your name. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Commissioners, I'm here today just because I want to ask you one question. What is the cost? What is the budget of discrimination? Commissioners, your EEOC determined that Presbyterian Hospital of Dallas violated my Civil Rights Acts of 1964 by discriminating against me and retaliating against me, but failed to sue because of cost. So I ask you again, commissioners, what is the cost? What is the budget for discrimination? Commissioners, racial slurs, racial misconduct, this is a old problem, but this is a new commissioner's court. So I ask you again, commissioners, what is the cost? What is the budget? for discrimination. Commissioners, you have citizens worried about losing jobs, but commissioners, what about those that already lost their jobs to racial discrimination, to racial misconduct? Commissioners, it's time that you make sure that your policies 
on racial discrimination, racial misconduct is being enforced, not just in commissioner's court, but in places like Presbyterian Hospital of Dallas who have been found in violation by your EOC. Thanks a lot, commissioners. Thank you. And well, Mr. Jeffrey, uh, just for the record, you live at, at 2485 uh, Victor's Apartment 255, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, and, uh, let me say one more thing. I am a retired employee from Forensics uh, Department, Dallas County Medical Examiner, retired. Never have I ever missed a day of work. My evaluations are through the roof. And when this started happening to me, I failed to report. Yeah, you, yeah, I'm sorry, you had your address. Thank you. Had, had your, you had your uh, thank you. All right, next is Mr. Richard uh, Walla. Mr. Richard Walla. Whalen? Mr. Richard Whalen or Walla? Um, thank you. Jim, you know we look All right, he is coming, so we'll wait a second for Richard. statements 
made by individuals on this court. I am a leader in the Hispanic community and I stand strong on values. Accountability and transparency are important to Hispanics as well as Texans. My concerns are about the contradictory statements made by certain commissioner and certain judge. Certain commissioners said the commissioner's court has been giving Bruce Sherbert performance reviews over the years. Certain judge said Mr. Sherbert has never given a performance review. And these statements cannot both be truth. The citizens demand an honest answer to the leader of the Dallas County Commissioner Court. You say that the purpose of the Elections Commission's meeting was to give Bruce Sherber a performance review. However, the facts speak otherwise. We heard that you did not notify him about the meeting or the purpose of the meeting, and you did not tell Elections Commission that the purpose of the meetings was for purpose review. But, well, no, sure. All the order is, is that again, the inference is directly to the, the uh, presiding officer. Well, um, to, to, I'll, 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 I'll uh, I'm continue to show leniency towards myself, but I will rule with the point of order. Um, again, as I instructed the two speakers before you, our rules, whether we like those rules or not, our rules state that we cannot have personal uh, statements. So when you're okay. speaking about me personally, can you make it broader into a policy statement? Yes, it is. Uh, it is broad. Well, to a certain commissioner, when you run for this office, you say that you will fight for Texas values. Estamos observando, we are watching. Without a doubt, Texans expect all of their elected and appointed officials to act with honesty and integrity. Without honesty, the people cannot trust their elected officials. You are a well-admired leader among the Latino community, and you say that you will push for transparency and accountability, and we believe in you. This is your opportunity. If there ever was one, the citizens demand honesty and accountability on the statements and actions of all these courts. The Hispanic population is watching to see if you carry out your promise, and silence is consent, and we want to know where do you stand. Commissioners, you have all taken a note to uphold the law and to tell the truth. The citizens demand to know the truth. Truth is not a racial issue. It is not a Democrat or Republican issue. All elected officials are expected to carry out their offices with honesty and integrity. If you cannot give an honest answer, the constituents of this county will perceive that you are hiding the truth. Everyone cares about corruptions. Hispanics, whites, blacks, all races and ethnicities oppose corruption. And quoting the leader of this court, we know there is a strength in our diversity and a bond in our shared values. So we just want these values to be shown. Texas demands honesty and integrity from our elected officials. Therefore, we have opportunities like these to express our concerns and ask for transparency, accountability, integrity, and honesty. And as I said before, estamos observando, we are watching. Thank you. Ms. Sandra Julian, please. Uh, and after Sandra Julian, we'll have Paula Scoggins. Paula wants to prepare. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good morning, my name is Sandra Julian. 1123 Statler, Duncanville, Texas. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you today in a matter that is very close to my heart. I'm concerned about the picture that is being presented to the entire county, entire country by the county of Dallas and how the image may affect the events of trust, value, and prosperity in our area. When people across the nation see the disrespect the, mission, the members of the commissioner's court and the people they represent show one another, it's enough to make large corporations think twice before coming to this area. Texas is known as a state that welcomes business and the Dallas area has had its share of financial support as well as the endorsement of the businesses relocating here. But when citizens of this county yell at each other and show total lack of control, it's enough to make people think twice before investing time and money in the Dallas area. Parliamentary law does not allow for such name calling, calling, shouting, and profanity to be tolerated. And how do you think such actions reflect on adults when our children will listen to the news and know exactly what is happening on, each, on any issue? I am 77 years old, born and raised in Dallas, and probably older than more, most of the people in this room. But when I was growing up, such actions would have been recent enough for doing things such as this, as being called on the carpet for our acts. Our parents, ministers, teachers, and especially our grandmothers 
would have sat us down and explained the facts of life to us in no uncertain terms. Please ask yourself, in your hearts of hearts, if, this is the, this, if your actions would escape notice of your grandmother or your minister, would you be proud of yourself? Or would they, would they be proud of you? Or would they want to take you behind the barn and explain to you the things in a more stringent way? Thank you for your attention and please examine your speech and actions. After all, you are role models for our younger citizens, whether you want to be or not. Do you want them to look, on, uh, up, look up to you as leaders who use a proper form, a form of address and proper language when speaking to one another and, the, and, and will in itself attract people to other people to our area? Or will they think that you've acted like the so-called stars of sports and entertainment that are in the spotlight for unlawful deeds? Thank you. All right. uh, after Paul Scoggins, we will hear from Tammy Smith. So Tammy Smith wants to get ready. Good morning. My name is Paula Scoggins. I live at 2613 Country Club Park in Garland, Texas. I am a wife, a mother, a grandmother, an active member of a very large church, and I sing in that choir. We all vote, and we demand integrity in the election process in Dallas County. I have a vested interest in the success of my city, my state, my country. My oldest son has been an F-16 pilot for 20 years. My family and I are proud Americans. I have a right to speak. We expect you to refer, you expect us to refer to you as honorable. We expect you to behave in an honorable manner. And we have a right to right. speak. Uh, again, it's a, that, that sounds like a, a personal a personal comment. So I want to cost you, I want you to speak. You do have a right to speak. I want to protect that. But I want you to not have any any um, personal comments such as that perhaps people have acted dishonorably because our rules simply say you can't have personal comments. Please continue. What color is integrity? Honesty? Strength of character? Does criticism have a color? Is it only valid if everyone concerned is of the same color? What color is bigotry? Bigotry is a blight on the heart and soul of our community. It is a type of control that is meant to perpetuate fear, anger, and division. I'm not looking for consensus or seeking your approval to our public servants and I have a right to speak. The obvious double standard has an evil stench to it, and it has no place in this court. A very wise man once said, evil prevails. All right, again, I'm not, you have forfeited the, 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 the stench of the double standard of one to one, so you're, you are um, instructed to please uh, uh, return to your seat, and we'll hear from the next speaker. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. And whether the person that clapped is clapping for me or clapping for her, if we see that person, we're going to have to remove it from the court, so please don't do that. Um, the next person was um, uh, Tammy Smith. Is Tammy Smith? Yes, ma'am, Miss Smith. Tammy Smith, 378-421-7081. Good morning, and thank you for your service, all of your service to Dallas County. But today I address you on behalf, not of any organization, a lobby group, or committee. I'm not a lawyer, judge, or I'm not, I'm not a representative. Rather, I am here as a concerned citizen who has become disappointed in the character of this administration. I'm here because the U.S. Constitution protects our right to vote, and it does this through trained election administrators who guarantee honest and efficient election policies. And with the the changes in the current administration, I just ask the court to uphold and protect the integrity of the election process in Dallas County. Also, commissioners, I still believe in a voting system. I just only ask that you allow me to believe in this administration as well. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Pastor Ste Stephen Brogan. Stephen Brogan. And after Pastor Brogan, we 
the start of this administration has uh, been fraught with controversy. And certainly, Bruce Sherbert's resignation has caused many questions of integrity of this court and the ability of this court to provide the county with a fair and just process in the administration of their votes. The confidence of this court has been shaken by the appearance of impropriety. In the midst of an atmosphere of contention and anger, it is easy to miss what's really important here in this situation. As we work through this antipathy together, there are two things that must be understood by this court going forward. One is that you serve at the consent of the people. Your first duty is to ensure that the business of this court is conducted in a way that fosters confidence and trust in those you serve. It is your duty to ensure that integrity, fairness, and justice is served in the election process and that all votes are secure and free from fraud. A wise king once said, when the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. I believe we are experiencing a loud groan over this administration. The second uh, is... Uh, Pastor, um, and, uh, I'm going to have, have to, to warn you, when you connect a Bible verse about wicked rulers and groaning, to discussing groaning about this court, you're making a personal um, statement about this court, and our rules don't allow it. Um, please confine your comments. And I want to give you the right to, to, to just uh, finish your, your thoughts, Pastor, and hold this against this time. But please confine your comments to non-personal statements. Um, the second is that this court has the obligation to abstain from the appearance of evil. That means integrity must be an integral part of all that you do. And integrity is when your thoughts, words, and actions all match. As it stands now, the county has a lack of confidence and experience what they believe are words that don't match. And so, it is important as you move forward into this administration under a leadership of this court that in addition to the stewardship responsibility uh, as the chief administrator of this court, uh, that you work to gain and maintain the trust and confidence of those you serve. And may I remind some of you who may have been with me during the last election cycle, each time that we met, we met in church. And I remember the testimony of faith and how your value systems were tied to your faith. And your faith connected with the constituents there and won the votes of the faith community. And we expect that you live up to the words that you spoke to us in those churches. And I have confidence that you will and you will fix the breach of confidence through a pristine application of those principles reflected in your faith. Just if I could have a point of clarification. Yes, go ahead. One, if, if, if a speaker addresses the court as a whole, uh, I think that should be acceptable. Is it acceptable to address the court as a whole? But they couch their term, their comments with regards to the court as a whole. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's going to be on someone on a case by case basis. But what I would find is generically, generically, what I would find is actually more rules and by point of clarification, it's good that we have this discussion. If someone says a group on the court has created a no, I'm just a stand. If you can isolate one group, that would be a problem. Address the court as a whole. Um, if someone says uh, the court is a kangaroo court that, that lacks integrity, um, I believe you're making a personal comment about five people, and I'm gonna, uh, unless we want to move to amend these rules, I'm gonna apply these rules. I'm just trying to get some comment. I'm just trying to get clarification. Also, with regards to clapping, we took that out. It's not in for speakers and it's not in and that was taken out for court members so i just want to make sure that that's clear that, that it's that's not in it's, 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 it's not it. we may need to revisit that if the coach is right at this juncture uh, judge i i would agree with commissioner Cantrell that uh, references to
to the court are, are not objectionable to, to me. I, I understand how you feel about singling people out, but I'm not, I'm not concerned well, about those. The chair will rule that derogatory references aimed at, at the uh, Dallas Tea Party, the commissioner's court, or any group that, that can be personalized is, is a, uh, uh, a personal statement and I'll strictly enforce and construe the rules. Having said that, if people want to move to amend the rules, um, I inherited these rules, so I'd uh, be happy to visit about that. But for today, I'm going to strictly enforce and interpret the rules as given to me from, from prior courts. Um, and our next speaker is Ms. Wayne Wooten. And if, if Dr. Broden is still in the, in the room, um, just for the record, Dr. Broden, and, okay, um, it's, it's, your address is 1118, the Meadows Parkway, DeSoto, Texas, 75115, correct? That's correct. And, and Ms. Wooten, if you make sure to state your, for our record, just state your address. My name is Wayne Wooten. I live at 1000 Grisby, Dallas, Texas. First of all, I don't like this building for government. It needs to be moved out of here. This is a, this is the assassination site for President Kennedy to me. That's really why I'm coming down here, because it's kind of weird in here. But, um, I don't think our government should be in this field. I just don't think it should be here. I think we should move it out of here. It's scary in here. Uh, now, I don't know how I can call the Tea Party liars. You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you can't tell the truth down here. Because they lied. The first Tea Party in Boston, Massachusetts lied on the Native Americans. When they said they threw that tea out their boat, they didn't. And now they lied on the picture of pride. All right, Ms. Wood, I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, I'm giving you a warning. And okay, I, and uh, I'm going to take your warning, Judge. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to please return to your seat. I'm giving you a warning. I ask, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, Ms. Wood, I'm not disrespecting nobody, Judge. I'm going to ask you to return to your seat. Can you please return to your seat? Well, you can't tell the truth, guy. Eric, can you help me? They're alive. citizens who are concerned about some of the things that have been happening in reference to the court in recent weeks. Um, relatively new to the area, so I'm learning my way through this process. And um, it's been great concern to me about the way the Bruce Sherbert case has been handled. I realize there's water in the bridge right now, but what it does do, what it does do in reference to the people on this court is shine a dark light. And most people want to have a, a positive view of their elected officials. And there is somewhat of a blind positive view that most people hold towards elected officials, but unfortunately, sometimes that's not necessarily deserved. But what we see happening here, and it's generated the concern, we have so many citizens coming out here to speak their voice on behalf of the situation, is primarily a result of some of the things that's been happening here is quite honestly does make us, you know, raise our eyebrows. So 
you know, in listening to the different comments that's been going on, people coming up here and speaking, the primary thing I want to say is that we expect, we as citizens do expect to have integrity and honesty as far as what this court does. And we will be watching and we will hold you accountable. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Leslie Reed, please. Leslie Reed, last call, Leslie Reed. He's here. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leslie Reed. I live at 2731 San Paula in Dallas. I've lived in Dallas about 50 years. I'm concerned because a man who was good at his job, who had a career as a public official, with dedication to seeing that elections were conducted, Fairly, was fired from his job and fired in a most unfair manner. I read his editorial in the paper, and while one can say he resigned. Sir, sir uh, uh, again, again uh, fired in an unfair manner, um, regardless of the, of the circumstances around Mr. Sherbert's resignation, unfair, personal attack. Please try not to say anything personal, but I want to give you an opportunity to. Your this sends a terrible message about Dallas County. Texas nationally is doing well, attracting businesses and growing at a rate that's dependent on many other states. But if I were planning to relocate, say from New York, New Jersey, some states like that, I would hesitate to visit Dallas County. I'm sure the folks in surrounding counties are looking at us closely and saying, and possibly telling the business, we have cleaner government than Dallas County. County employees deserve better, and we, the citizens of Dallas, deserve better. Uh, that takes us to uh, Mr. Con uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Connie Miles. My name is Connie Miles. I live at 10706 Royal Park Drive in Dallas, 75230. Um, I want to start by uh, telling you that I'm a little bit confused because if we can't come here and tell you something that has happened within the court that we're concerned about, what venue do we have? I thought that this was the venue for that, and it seems today that I am mistaken on that. But I would like to know if there is a venue. Do you want clarification? Is this part of your speech or do you stop or not? Do you want clarification on what you can say or is that no, for your I'm sorry. I understand what right. you're saying. I can say what I don't understand is then sorry, where do I have a voice? Because it sounds like today I don't really get to say what I need to say. And so that's really my point to you. Um, but I'll continue. Last week on national TV, something um, that distressed me played out. And um, I feel that it made uh, the commissioners look bad. It made the city of Dallas look bad. Um, I believe when you put down any race of people, I don't care what color they are, they could be purple for all I care, um, it shows your own true colors and how you feel about a group of people. But we all have to one day learn to work together. We can't continue to be backbiting and um, only working for one particular ethnicity. Um, I think it's time we just put all that aside and quit. Okay, yeah. I, I find that you're making personal statements about uh, one commissioner based on what we uh, or what was said last week. So I want you to broaden your your uh, comment so that you're not making a personal statement about one of our commissioners and still getting your claim across. Don't take my comment away from her time. Please continue. Um, I will move to another topic about that. Um, at a commissioner's meeting recently, um, I sat and listened to the information about the budget for the hospital that's to be built under the jail. And I've forgotten it was something like $58 million, it seems like. But the statement that concerned me most was that um, we didn't need to vet the contractor that's been given that project. I'm here to tell you that as a citizen who pays taxes, we must vet every single contractor that works for the city. We need to um, be good stewards of the money that the, the people of Dallas County pay into the budget. 
and I feel like that was not being a good steward to not vet every single person that's working for the county. Um, I would say, in closing, if any commissioner is not able to be transparent, if they are not able to protect the dollars of Dallas County, if they can't take criticism without lashing out, if they can't admit and rectify their mistakes, then they need to man up and step down. Uh -oh. That was personal. Uh, and Mr. Greg Byrne, please. Mr. Greg Byrne. Judge in the moment. I'm speaking globally. Uh, I ask uh, <laughs> you know, I, you know, maybe it's a citizen to know more than we know. I did not know we had already bought a contract. First of all, it's $48 million. I did not know. And so uh, I expect staff to give me a briefing. I didn't know we already had a contract. I didn't even know we were, we were even finished with the plan. Oh, but we're also required to follow state law. State law. Well, we have a contract for the planning. And the reason I brought this up last week is because I did not feel that the people in the public knew what the $48 million was about. And uh, I was trying to explain that. It's been obviously, we don't have a contract, but we do have a contract for part of the hospital. And before we start, that time, I want to echo that, and, and I think I speak for everyone on this court that uh, no contracts of, it, of anywhere near that size will ever go out without fully being uh, okay by this court. Excuse me, Judge, except for uh, sole vendor contracts that we have. Yeah. Yeah. They don't through the vetting process. And to the extent we've had a sole vendor contract that's 50 some odd million dollars, we need to stop that. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, well, um, th that being said, and that, um, that, that does not count against your name, so uh, please say your, your, uh, your name and your address and, and give us your name. My name is Gregory Raymond Byrne. I reside at 4821 Gaston Avenue, apartment 208, Dallas, Texas, uh, which is part of District 3 of Dallas County. I'm a former Democratic precinct chair. Precinct 3208, I've been a Democratic clerk and election judge since 2005. I've had the opportunity to work for and with Bruce Sherbert, and have found him to be fair, unbiased in how he handles elections in Dallas County. And I was shocked at his resignation from the Elections Administrator. When I heard that the Elections Commission was meeting and had not met for 20 years, I felt like there was a political agenda behind that meeting of the Elections Commission. The purpose was to replace Bruce Sherbert with a hand-picked successor who would be a puppet for that commission. All right, Elections Mr. Commission. Uh, Mr. Burton, um, puppet, yeah, I'm gonna find that to be a, a personal comment, and I'm gonna once again ask you, as I have everyone else, to keep your, your comments available and in keeping with the long-standing rules of the court. Because of the recent actions, voter confidence in Dallas County has been tarnished. This is unfortunate because voter confidence is of utmost importance in the election process. We must ensure that the elections are done without compromise and that the citizens of Dallas County know that the election process is safe and secure. As long as the latest decisions are upheld, I don't believe we, the citizens of Dallas County, will be confident in our election system. The other topic I wish to bring forth is that the speakers that come before this commission are supposed to conduct themselves with respect. And we also expect the same from the court. Recently, there have been derogatory remarks made by the court. I voted for the current commissioner in the last election ballot. When I and others cast their vote, we expect a certain amount of respect and a higher standard for uh, professionalism. Than we have recently been exhibited. As a citizen of Dallas County, I've been ashamed of the behavior. Uh, Christian, uh, 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 thank you. Uh, please, re please return to your seat. That's the second violation of the first, you know, personal aspect of that. Keeping with our rules, please return to your seat. Um, Mr. Vincent Hall, please. <laughs> Vincent Hall, I live at 922. 
place in Louis, the son of Texas, 7595. Uh, last week, uh, there were six speakers who unleashed hatred and hostility. Yeah, we'll mention that. Uh, Mr. Hall, uh, again, uh, you're identifying uh, persons, those six persons. Are you making a personal statement? Please keep your, your comments for the way. Well, and, and Judge, in all, uh, in all uh, fairness, I, I'd like to, uh, to see these these rules. I, I think the one thing that, that's unified this whole group today is that, you know, I, I think a certain amount of the conflict that we're having is a part of growth. Dallas is growing. It is getting diverse. A lot of people have a hard time figuring that out, and that's what a lot of this is about. And so I think we, I think we still have to be able to, to address this, this body. Uh, but also be able to, I want to hear what these people have to say. And this also ought to be a, a, a vehicle whereby they can get it out. So I'll, I'll go to the own parts of my statement that aren't personal. Um, and, and I guess my question is, why is there so much fuss on behalf of a man who has died? The election administrator resigned. And frankly, if he ain't fit to fight the battle for his job, why should I trust him with the voting rights that took 300 years to secure? Um, Mr. Hall, again, that, that is a, it sounds like a personal statement about Mr. Sherbert uh, being fit for his job. Okay. Um, Making personal attacks. Okay. Well, after 26 years, Commissioner Price is famous at this court for asking two questions. Where are the black folks and where is the diversity? That's how Dallas County went from $50,000 50, in uh, 1986 annually in MWBE to millions today. That's why the boards and the commissions look like they do. Frankly, that's why Dallas County looks as diverse as it, as it has been. And I, I think his question, since there are 600 um, precinct chairs last week, uh, and, and they're all, all racist, where are the people beside the one we saw? Oh, oh, oh. Did you say racist? Uh, racist. Yeah. He said, well, it, you, you need to return your seat. I'm sorry. Um, all right. All right. I believe that is our, our last uh, uh, last speaker. Uh, someone? Oh, Pauline Dedrick has made it in. So, Miss Dedrick, would you like to speak? Pauline Dedrick.
but please never lose sight of the fact that your first obligation and your first duty is to serve. The reasons that prompted Bruce Sherbert's uh, abrupt, abrupt uh, departure are still unclear. One concern that was expressed recently in the Dallas News interview was uh, stated this way. Sherbert said, said he sat with you and you presented him with a piece of paper to sign that was essentially his resignation letter. Why would you do that if, as you have intended, the Elections Commission has, has the right to hire and to fire? In my opinion, that question has not been asked. All right, yeah. Uh, thank you, for, thank you for, uh, for your comments. This court is now reconvened in public session, <coughs> and the recess for its closed session is authorized by Chapter 551 of the Government Code. It's previously posted. Any action as a result of the process can take place in a subsequent session. Just remember our reform rules are in effect until you leave this.